everybody, how you doing? This is Mark Connors, and welcome to another exciting edition of Backstage Pass. Coming to you live tonight from my tour bus on Saturday, the 12th, January the 12th, 2013. Shit is going to hit the fan tonight, guys. <laughs> because uh, I've been talking to you guys about the musician stuff and how we are just simply completely screwed. Sorry about that. I, I'm, I'm out in the studio. I'm not I'm on my bus right now and um, I'm not in the studio so I don't have all of the tools and my crew and all that stuff helping me out here. Hey you guys before we get started tonight I want you to see my new uh, coffee. It's called the Firehouse 911 Tribute Coffee. It's a tribute in honor to all of the firefighters um, uh, around America and uh, it's really cool stuff and then also I've got some snickerdoodle here. See some more snickerdoodle and I also have some more um, um, Christmas coffee and New Year's coffee left over for some of you guys too. But tonight we are going over the fake, the the fake Facebook um, uh, accounts, the stars that uh, are supposedly on Facebook talking to everybody. Such crap. Ah, anyway, so. Um, and then also we're going to be talking about the robots that are out right now um, that are playing music that are going to steal jobs for every musician, studio musicians, and even possibly live performances. This video has over 4 million views, so you can kind of see where this one's going to go. Yeah, robots playing music now uh, in the studio and everywhere else, wherever you can think of. You know, So why would they need you, right? Okay, anyway. And then also we're going to be going um, over uh, why the fact that you know the music industry is conning us all the time conning us um and uh we just can't figure that out yet but we're gonna we're working on it everybody's working on it together also youtube and facebook contracts if you guys read your contracts on either one of those establishments well guess what you're screwed read it um and then also the five things that i think are killing the music industry that's what we are going over tonight on backstage pass i've got plenty of coffee I'm ready for you guys tonight because it's a this is a long show guys this is you know tonight's not gonna be too long but it's too hard to tell everybody what's going on of why musicians are so screwed I can't do it in 10 minutes I can't do it even in one hour it took me three years almost to basically investigate this and check it out and make sure that I knew what I was talking about because I didn't want to say something to the music industry and make myself look like a complete ass so I do try to follow this um, as much as possible. I try to get the truth for you guys as much as possible. First thing we're going to do here really quick is we're going to take a look at a video that just blew me away today. And uh, I'm going to turn the camera around for you here so you can see this crap. These guys, this is basically, let me get that out of the way there for you too. This is basically... Whoops, here, here we go, it's hard. I got one camera. Guys, I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm dealing with this all by myself. So, here is this video of the robots playing. And uh, let me turn that up for you. These are robots, guys. And that's my camera falling apart. So, because I'm not in the studio, I'm really sorry. Anyway, here we go. Robots. Whew, I think. Here we go. Can you believe that shit? Look at that drummer going over there. That, my guys, right there is going to be one of the things that is going to kill all of us. The internet, you know how they said years ago that um, the uh, MTV killed the radio star? Well, they were correct, weren't they? And um, because who listens to the radio anymore, hardly? 
Why would you listen to the radio when you can uh, watch MTV and watch the the artist, listen to the artist all at the same time? Why would you you know go listen to the radio station? The only time you listen to the radio station, I think, is basically when you're like um, on uh, in the car. You know, and even then, a lot of people listen to their own CDs and their iPods and what have you, and all that fun stuff. Anyway, so let me get my camera back here where I can see what the hell I'm doing. Okay, I um, posted some postings this week about the music business, and I got some harassment from some jerk in, uh, you know, off a of music row, of course, that was going to uh, basically tell me I didn't know what I was talking about and uh, had no theory of, or no way to back it up and all that fun stuff and everything else. So basically I told him to go do his damn homework and then call me back and no, you know what, I think he did his homework and he didn't contact me back because he knows damn well he was making an ass of himself calling me names and all that stuff. If you want to call and debate my show and whatever it is that I want to say, please do so. But you don't need to call me names. You know, come on. This is, a, are we are we professionals here? Are we adults or are we just a bunch of jokers out there being treated like a bunch of crap by a bunch of people out there that won't even pay to, to see our, our music? It's just ridiculous. Okay, so anyway. Um, um, uh, let's see here. Let me find this, this, this thing here. This, oh, by the way, did I, I got to mention to you guys, um, I am now hosting, co-hosting, um, a couple of shows here, um, out of Florida right now. Um, and, uh, so Bill Dietz, the Bill Dietz show, which is called Eyewitness Band <laughs> out of Florida. I am also, I'm hosting the, the, uh, Rockstar News on that show there. It's um, every every Tuesday at 2 p.m. at iswtvstudio.com. And uh, it's pretty cool, pretty cool show. It's actually really neat um, because we all get to uh, basically talk to all the musicians around the country. We got three different, you know, four different um, radio shows and TV shows in on this thing now. And it's really, really cool. I really like it. Okay, fake, fake Facebook pages. Stars with fake Facebook pages. Why is that? Come on, you guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest with you. I saw a posting today from Tim McGraw, big country star. Or a lot of just about everybody knows who the hell Tim McGraw is. And if you don't, then huh, I I don't know what to say. He's he's you know he's just he's the cowboy. Uh, anyway, you know who he is. All right. So anyway, he um there's a posting today. Um, how about that Denver game, everybody? Um. Sorry, so busy, I gotta move on to the something awards, whatever. Okay. So then he's got, you know, what, a thousand people <laughs> commenting back to him, commenting, oh, hey, Tim, how's it, Tim, and then this, and tell Faith, and this, and this, and this. People. That's not Tim. I put money on it that it's not Tim. You know who it is? It's it's a it's a, an artist management firm off of Music Row, and I bet you I can even almost tell you which one it is, but I'm not gonna because I'm not gonna give them any publicity. They have these guys that sit in rooms and 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 run all of the Facebook, the MySpace, you know, the Reverb Nation. They talk to people. They're all fake. You know what? How I know that? Because I have one. Actually, it's not even me. It's not even my Facebook that that is saying things. I'm not posting stuff on that Facebook. There's a Mark Connors Facebook out there that I have nothing to do with. You know who does? The record people that, that my record label, when they set up the record deal and started dealing with all these people, you know, and the artist development people years ago and all this, and you know, and management and production and production, you know, all this crap. All these people had their hands in my career. Like 28 people were working for me once. I went, are you insane? Are you kidding me? This is crazy. All these people, what, what, what? I'm supposed to be a singer. I'm, I'm a guitar player, a songwriter, a recording artist, a performer, you know. And and now they got me wanting to do a thousand things on the computer. Like I got time. Like Tim has time to sit on Facebook. Are you serious, people? Come on. Okay. So what we did was, I wrote him a little letter, or whoever the heck this was. And I said, all right, if you're really Tim McGraw, tell me what's in your living room in your big giant house just outside of Leapers Fork, Tennessee, um, right down from the Maximus Ranch. And um, what's in your living room that is so unusual that would never be in a living room usually if you walked in there? Now, before you ask yourself, now, how the hell would I know that? Well, trust me, I know what's in the living room of his big house in Leapers Fork because I've been in there, okay? So, what did I do? I asked him, 
tell me what's in the living room that's so unusual that people would just go, well, okay, then I would know that it was Tim McGraw. But no answer. It'd be so simple for Tim because, you know, he only lives right down the road and he's got this big, giant, beautiful ranch across the street from where he used to live. And, um, but nobody responds to me. It's, you know why? Because it's not Tim. Because whoever the hell's on the other end of there has no idea what's in Tim's house in the living room that's so unusual. I'll tell you what it is. It's a drum booth. It's a recording drum booth that they built into the living room. And you know why? Because they used the house as a recording studio. It's a big, giant, beautiful, sprawling ranch. You know, I mean, you can see it in the background of, of uh, one of my music videos that I recorded right out at his place. Okay, so I know for a fact that that's not Tim. So why are they doing this crap to us? Or why are we falling for this stuff? Why do you people think that that is actually true? What makes you think that you are actually talking with Tim McGraw? Like he's got time to talk. You know, he's a big, big, big star. He's not just a star. He's not just a big star. He's a big, big, big star. He doesn't have time to sit on Facebook and talk with us. <laughs> Get real. <laughs> okay, so I just want to let you know that, okay? Thank you. These damn robots. Oh, shit, man. The robots. Just so I, just, just real quick before we go to the robots, I just want to let you know. Every artist is pushed by the record label out of Nashville, the headhunters in Nashville, to push you to an artist development thing on Music Row so you can go in there and spend $4,000 a month like I was doing on, on to have people sit on your Facebook and talk for you. To, uh, to uh, get on Reverb Nation and put your song out. And th that's just ridiculous, man. There's no connection with your audience. There's no connection with your public. There's no connection with your fans at all whatsoever when you do that. So I told him, no, no, no. I'm going to try to do it as much as I can. And you know what? And it's hard to get on Facebook, you know, and I'm not this big, giant, giant star. I don't have, you know, 20 number one hit songs and all that crap. And I still didn't have time to get on Facebook. We had to hire people to do it or else it wouldn't get done. It's such a big, important thing. I think it's a bunch of crap. I really, really do. I think it's a bunch of crap. Now, you'll find people that are real on there. I, 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 I can point out a few more easily that are just bullcrap. Facebook bullcrap pages. All right? Okay, so just get that in mind. Okay, now these robots. These robots are going to put people out of business. If you can program a robot to sit there and play the way that I just showed you, then you can re then you can pro program a robot to to do to just about any song, couldn't you? Huh? They could play any damn song, really. And then you say, yeah, but they couldn't play it with emotion and feeling. Bullshit. That's bullshit. Because you you're you're talking about human emotion and feeling. Does that does that mean that? that it's only with humans though yeah it is human only humans can feel emotions and that kind of stuff but people you can program computers nowadays to have the emotion within the song within the recording within the feel of the way the drum is hit if you can build things like that if you can imagine it in your mind nowadays it can be done simple so so damn easy all right so these robots. I'd really like to hear what you guys have to say about these damn robots, man. They are literally just, you know, there's a drummer, there's a bass player, and there's a guitar player. They don't miss a lick. They're, out, they're never out of tune. They're never late. You don't have to worry about them uh, getting drunk. <laughs> you don't have to worry about their girlfriends. You don't have to worry about their families, their kids, their hassles. Their, no drugs, no nothing. Doesn't that tell you that somebody would capitalize on that? Who? That's always my question, is who's behind the source? That's always the, the deal. Who's behind the source? If you know who's behind the source, then you'll also know what their agenda is. Pretty easy to do. All you got to do is just know who they are. All right, now also, um, so so why are we being so conned all the time? Why are Why is the music industry lying to us? What was Michael Jackson talking about the day that he got up there and did his little escapade thingy there, you know, on TV? This is the last one. I promise. I promise this is the last one. 
and the history books are lying and they're lying to you and nobody's telling you the truth and I you need to know it doesn't matter what you think of Michael Jackson it doesn't matter what you think he did or assume that he did or feel that he did or what who he was or whatever the man was the most incredible performer on the face of the earth, period. And we all know that. So you don't think that he knew a little bit of the inside crap of what was going on? You don't think that there's people that know that the music industry is lying to us and that they're cheating us? That they're, they're getting us to um, sign contracts that do nothing but benefit them only, but not us, the musicians? Do you, do, you, do you know that in the old days, they used to give million dollar record deals? <laughs> you think that shit, shit still re exists? No. No, no, no. You've got to be super, super sonically big, man, to get a, a record deal like that. It's really hard. See, the thing is, is that musicians, obviously, we've proven it over and over and over again. Musicians just want to play. What about, what? Paycheck? Oh, paycheck. Yeah, you guys get paychecks, don't you? Okay. Now, I know some of you do. I know that there's been, I know bands that are making, uh, you know, a million bucks a night. I know artists and bands that are making half a million dollars a night. I know artists that are making 200000 a night. I know artists that are making a hundred a night on down to 80, 70, 65, all the way down to friggin' $400. Okay. That's how wide the spectrum is of a paycheck in the music industry. Even a little bit more than that now, I believe, you know, there's certain people in the music industry right now that are getting $1.5 million for an hour and a half of their time. Are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. Ticket prices are so outrageous right now. Don't you know why? It's not the bands, guys, that are raising these prices. It's not the bands that are raising the prices um, in, in the industry for sale, record sales, CD sales. Do you know how much it costs to do a music video? A real professional music video costs you a quarter of a million dollars. That's right. <laughs> to do it right, quarter of a million bucks. <clears throat> now, there are guys out there that can do it for cheaper. And then there's guys, you know, that, that can just go out there and they do it themselves and they try their best and they do everything they can. You know what? Me, I shot my own videos because I'm not going to pay anybody, anybody that much money for them to come out there and make me do something on a videotape that actually will get me nowhere, do absolutely nothing for me except for compete with the other million guys that are actually out there still not getting anything, not doing anything, not touring, not making any money. <laughs> How many of you guys are touring? I don't hear you. How many of you musicians are touring right now? How many of you guys own buses, have bands, have records, have promotion, publicity, and stuff, but you're not touring? Why is that? How many of you guys had shows all the time, like me, kicking ass out there doing shit, making shit happen, boom, boom, bing, everybody's loving you, boom, sitting on top of the world, and it's like one day, all of the sudden, somebody just took this switch, it's like, kroom, kroom, down on the music industry, they just shut the switches off, no more calls, no more CD sales, no more merchandise sales, the bus is sitting, costing money, rotting away, doing nothing. And everybody knows when you got a tour bus, man, you need to use it. Because if you don't, it dies on you in the parking lot. It gets worse and worse. Things break down. You have got to keep that thing always rolling down the road. Or else, it, like I said, it'll die on you. It's like anything else that just sits around. It just, you know, rots away. So, um, I, I just, I, I, I know that most of you guys aren't touring out there. And how do I know that? You know, I put it on the show last week. I was talking with T.C. Ridge, good buddy of mine in the country music industry. Man, my studio was right next to Taylor Swift's and, and Diamond Coach in Nashville, Tennessee. I got to see every bus and every band that was really worth the crap. You know, um, Night Train right across the street. Um, um, uh, uh, the Hemp Hill Brothers right across the street. Now, these are all bus companies. 
these are all bus companies that um, had their buses all parked right around where I parked my bus for years. And but I have my own place, so I didn't need to park there. So, but I could see every time I walk out the door, I go there. I could see Taylor Swift buses, and I know when she's gone. They're 30 feet away from me. I, I heard them all the time. You know, pulling in, pulling out, okay? Right behind me, Blake Shelton, all of the country stars, big country stars right there, right across the road, the other country stars, and then right across the street from there, even more stars and more stars, rock stars, everybody. They all keep their buses right there. It is the transportation hub of the music industry. Right there at that corner of I-24. Serious. That is the hub, okay? In Old Hickory. All right, so anyway, I know, and I always knew when people were coming and going, and I would walk out the door and go, oh my gosh, if those guys' bus, if their bus is sitting there and they're not working, how the hell am I expecting for me to go work? And what's going on? And why isn't, why are they not calling anymore for, for, for gigs? Why are the promoters not calling? Just all of a sudden, I mean, it was like one day in one friggin' day. Everything was just kicking ass, bro. I'm on, I'm, I'm on friggin' covers of magazines and, and hold, hold on. This is the kind of publicity crap that was going out about me, and and still, it doesn't work. Look at this, guys. I'm in Country Weekly magazine. Um, that, Dolly Parton and me. I'm on the damn cover of Country Weekly. Is this Country Weekly? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, People magazine. Friggin', I'm in People magazine too. All right. That's that's not me. That's Keith. Um, but I'm in damn People magazine all over in every damn grocery store in the country. Publicity up the yin yang. A half a million dollars went out to promote my career in the last three years. Where's the shows? Is my does my music suck that bad? Do you ask yourself that ever? Um, is my show that bad? Um, do I not have any talent? Well, I got news for you, people. It's people out there that don't have any talent that are actually making it right now. It's the dumbasses that are making making it right now. Which you people don't understand is people that make it right now really didn't make it right now. They actually were in in crap underneath that contract four or five years ago, and it took them that long to get where you see them at right now. No kidding. You think it happens overnight? No. It doesn't. So, why did the button just come down and nobody's hardly going to work anymore? What, are you going to tell me that, oh, you're, you're working? Here, call me. Call me and tell me. I'll pull up your website and see you're not. And if you are, God bless you. Good for you. Hang on to it because it's not going to last for very much longer. I don't know if you know it, but things are going to about to change. See, all of the laws are changing. And if you're not checking this stuff out, people, if you're not going to, I mean... Uh, who wakes up in the morning and says, hey, let me adjust this here. Sorry. I, I need I need a little bit more of me and not so much of the wall. Sorry. Who wakes up in the morning and says, hmm, I think I'll go to uh, whitehouse.gov and I think I'll look up the laws that um, pertain to the music industry today because just for the hell of it, today I'm kind of curious of <laughs> what's going on. Who does that? I didn't either until I realized that there were ways for me to find out the truth of what was going on in the music industry. And I talked to a friend of mine in Nashville, which is a very, very reputable um, gentleman, high up in the music industry. I mean, just about as high as you can friggin' get. And he told me, what's about to happen and I thought man that's that's just fucking insane you gotta be kidding me that would never happen how could they do that how could they own all of us like how could how could they who's they who do I keep talking about they hmm who is they see I always keep asking who's behind this crap because once you know who's behind the crap once you know your opponent then you learn what your opponent's about. And then you play with your opponent having knowledge and skill of knowing who your opponent is and how to play that particular game. I always look at everything like a chess game. And if you don't play chess, I'm really sorry to hear that because ask anybody that does play chess, it's the game of life.
When you learn how to play chess, you learn how to do business also because the same techniques that are used in chess are used in everyday philosophy, like martial arts. I spent, you know, 40 years in martial arts. I'm still a martial artist. I use martial arts every day. Whether I punch and whether I kick, whether I'm, I'm flippity flopping or whatever, whether I'm teaching a Marine or whether I'm whatever it is, I use martial arts every day. Whether I'm in the studio, the recording studio, I use my techniques every day, just like the chess game. I use my, my moves, my techniques of moves that I've learned in chess every day in my business also. And guys, that's why I've made it so big in, in the music industry. Now, you guys may go, oh, Mark Connors, what does he think he is? Who does he think he is? You know what I think I am? I think I'm me. That's all. Just me. I don't claim to be some big rock star. I don't claim to be um, Mr. Hot Shit, country singer, blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, people walk up to me the other A guy walked up to me the other day and asked me to sign his guitar. Of course I'll sign your guitar. But guys, it's not because I'm some big hot shit country star. It's because there's people out there that respect me for what I've done. They've seen what I've done all my life. They know I have experience. They know that I deserve what I have. And I'm going to flat out tell you right now, guys, musicians, I have made every dream that any musician could ever, ever dream of come true. You watch the, the, the rock star videos and all the, you know, the limos and all of the good, all that stuff, the money, you know, the, the parties, the buses, the, I did all of that guys, all of it. Just as, just, just like, and with the biggest stars in the world. So don't tell me that I don't have the experience. Somebody told me that I didn't have the experience to even be talking about this crap. Oh yes, I do. You can check on me. Call around Nashville. They'll tell you. Yeah, we know Mark Connors. Yeah, yeah. He's gold. He sees. He's not going to screw you around. He's a good man. He works hard. He works. I'll, I'll have your the people will tell you that I work harder than anybody they've ever met. So please don't write me in anymore and tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Learn what you're talking about before you comment me on my Facebook and tell me that I'm scumbag or that I need to start surfing the internet and learning stuff when you jump in onto a, on a, on a conversation that you didn't even read yourself, so you don't know the facts of the conversation. And the next thing you know, you're in there just starting shit with people. And, you know, I respect my fans and my friends and my Facebook friends, so I don't jump on them too hard. But I'd appreciate if you guys didn't do that. Please learn how to read before you jump in on a, on a comment. Please do some, some research. Now, everybody, musicians, this stuff is all on the Internet, okay? Everything that I'm saying to you, just about, is on the Internet. You can find it. It's not bullshit. There's not. There's a lot of bullshit out there, of course. But you can literally go to certain pages. Go to White House, the WhiteHouse.gov, and look up the laws. Look up the Patriot Act, and look up the the freaking treaty that's getting ready to be signed. Right, right soon, in April. When that happens, guys, the laws are going to change. Now, let me mention something to you. The words, the words, New World Order. What the hell does that mean exactly? Does that mean that if I say the word New World Order, I'm a conspiracy theorist? Does it mean that, um, oh my God, I must, I must be one of those psycho guys that, oh shit, he thinks the whole world's going to end. Learn what New World Order is. It is exactly that, people. It has nothing to... What I'm talking to you about right now has nothing to do with military. It has nothing to do with world domination physically. Notice I said the word physically, though, <laughs> because it does in every way have to do with the world, with the word domination. Your songs, your music, your royalties, your time, your actions. Hey, did you ever uh, go online and hear, Google it, where it says, um, or, or, or YouTube it, where um, President Obama says to this little kid, you didn't build that. You didn't build that. This kid, little kid walks up to him and goes, Look, Mr. President Obama, look what I built. I built, look, look, Mr. Obama, what I built. I built my coffee. I have my own coffee. You didn't build that. I didn't? Who, who did? <gasps> what? <laughs> what the?
the government? <laughs> Are you fucking crazy? No shit. The government says they build everything now. And if you don't want to listen to this crap, change the channel. Because you know what? If you don't want to help yourself, then I don't really have the time to help you. Because there's too many people out there that do want to help themselves. There's too many people out there that are very concerned about their music career and the hours and the months and the years and the compassion and the tears and the blood, sweat and tears and all of the crap that goes into making a, a, a recording artist into a star. Now, come on, guys. You, some of you guys know how hard it is. You know what you go through. You know how much money you pay. You know, I'm telling you, I can tell you all this from experience, guys. All right? I did get the million dollar record deal. And half of my money went to promoting me. How much money's come back from that? Fucking diddly squat shit, bullshit, nothing. You know why? Because I don't have control of my career anymore. I can't call the people and, and, and have 28 people working for me anymore. You know why? Because it doesn't matter. I am no longer in control of my career. As of the moment where President Bush signed the Patriot Act, years ago it changed you guys just don't understand here let me give you an example um a guitar goes for sale on online here here, here let's go no yeah just another guitar i don't want to use any van halen's guitar because that was that was a different story let's say a guitar goes for sale online and um a um, hundred people buy it let's say a thousand people buy it but how many musicians are here in the world that have never heard of it never seen it and they're never going to buy it because they don't even know it is it even exists, right? Okay, so guess what? That's you. You don't even really exist because once you sign a deal with certain people, watch out for the headhunters in Los Angeles, New York, Chicago, and in Nashville, Tennessee. Watch out for those headhunters, guys. They will screw you over so fucking bad. They will take so much of your money and not shit will be done. You know, I'm going to tell you, one of the companies that I hired, they, um, for that, that, you know, to run my Facebook and all that stuff, like I told you, it has to be done. Um, um, and, but, but faking the people out, man, it's bullshit. I, I couldn't do it anymore. So here's, here's what it was. They're charging me $4,000 a month, you know, to do their little ch -ch 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 thing, ch -ch 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 thing. And uh, it, you know how long it took me to get my passwords from them? Do you know that one of the Facebooks that you look at right now of Mark Connors, if you look on Mark Connors, you'll find about three or four of them, and only one of them is mine? Only one of them is me. Who in the hell is running Facebook shit under my name? With my picture, with my face, with my name, with my music, with my talent, with my skills, with my hours of work, with my years and years of dedication and starvation and trying to make it happen in the music industry? Guess what? I couldn't even get the damn passwords to my own accounts. You know why? Because they're not mine. <laughs> shit, man. Do you think you're surprised hearing this? You should have seen how fucking freaked out I was when, when I realized that I was paying these guys $4,000 a month for like a year and I couldn't even get my damn passwords to my accounts because they had accounts that were under my name. They were using my name to promote other bands. No shit. Now, you know, people, you know that I've spent a lot of money. You know damn well to get into People Magazine. I can tell you right now. People Magazine, let's see, what did my record label spend on this ad? Hmm, I believe it was $40,000. Yeah, no kidding. 40 grand. Yeah, you're in, you know, I was in every damn grocery store across America and uh, and and yeah, I was selling CDs and 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 people were um, buying my material and my product and stuff like that. But, I mean, hell, look, I'm in this damn thing. I can't even find the shit. <laughs> oh, well, it's in there. Look, shaboom, that's me. 40 grand, shaboom, 40 grand a piece, man. Come on. That's ridiculous. Who can, can you spend that kind of money on your career? Look at this. 
twenty thousand dollars. Where the hell are mine? Here we go. Twenty grand. This ride up here, in country. Fuck. There. We, no, wrong one. There I am. Mark Connors, the man in his music, right there, full page, Country Weekly magazine, twenty thousand dollars for one week. Now, if you could afford to spend money like that on your career, well then, uh, good for you, and more power to you. But I'll tell you what, I learned. I didn't have any control over. Didn't matter how much money I spent. Didn't matter how much money um, we put in. Didn't matter how many buses. Didn't matter how many band members. I mean, didn't how many employees we had. We were working our frigging asses off. I mean, I had to call one of our guys on our team one day and say, um, well, well, the record label manager called first. We were both on the phone with him and said, you've got to blow $20,000 today. Most people, you know, they'd say, what? Blow $20,000? What the hell am I going to blow $20,000 on? Well, for gosh sakes, come on. I went out and blew $200,000 in a day. Easy. Easy. In the music industry. Yeah. You want a bus? Go buy one. 200 grand for a cheap one. You know, reasonably 200 grand. <laughs> just, just for the bus. That doesn't include recording. That doesn't include music videos. It doesn't include your promotion. It doesn't include all the other stuff. Well, now, come on. You think record labels are dishing out $200,000 for you to go buy a bus? No. What they do is they lie to you. We'll get you a bus. You'll have a beautiful bus. You can pick any any bus that you want to. Um, we'll uh, put you in the recording studio. Um, we will make sure that you have the best players in town on your CDs. We will make sure... This is all the stuff that they tried to offer me when I told them to go fuck themselves. Um, we'll get you a, a car, a, a nice little Mercedes. We'll get you um, uh, uh, ahead of the line in the restaurants and stuff. You won't have to wait in line. You, we'll get you on the walls. We'll get you on the on this. And we'll do this and we'll do that and we'll do this and do that. You know what? They're so full of shit. So I didn't sign with one of the biggest record companies in the world. Somebody that I dreamt about um, signing with all my life. I told them basically to go kiss my ass because they weren't offering me a damn thing that I didn't already have. I already had a record deal and they didn't know that. I already had a record deal that was paying out three times the amount than they, that they were offering me. I already had a tour bus. I already had all of the shit that they tried to con me into doing. Here's the secret, people. Let me tell you something about what record labels do to you. When you go in there with stars in your eyes and you think, oh, this is fantastic. I'm going to, uh, I got a record deal. And they're going to offer me uh, $200,000. $250,000. $200, well, to a guy that's, you know, been on the streets living in the alley in his car for the last six months. Um, you know, dreaming about making it in the music business. $250,000 deal is a pretty damn good deal, I'd say. Wouldn't you? Well, of course you would. If you're living in your car in the alley and you've got songs, which I've seen a guy that was living in the alley, and I'm not kidding you, lived in the alley of Music Row. <laughs> they picked up one of his songs. The guy was living in Leaper's Fork, out Franklin, where all the big rock stars live, the country stars, all of the people in the music industry live here. They, um, or there, I'm sorry, I'm not there right now. Um, they, they, he got, he got a house out there and did all, I mean, sh wham! Songwriter. Yeah. That was great. That was great for him then, too. But you know what? Things have changed. Anyway, so you go into the record label, and they promise you all this crap. They lie to you. Guess what? They own the recording studio that they send you to, and then they bill you to be in that recording studio. They go out, and they lease a bus for, um, I mean, you know, uh, $3,000, $4,000 a month, and they tell you that it's yours, and they make you get your ass out there and work your butt off, and, um, uh, but that bus costs $7,500 a month, plus driver's fees, plus fuel, plus maintenance, plus mileages, plus, um, hours on the generator, plus laundry, plus all the bullshit that comes along with it, the cleaning fees that come after. I know I have my own bus. I know what the hell I do. I, I myself for a long time had to go through all of that shit too. 
It's a bunch of lies. They don't own the bus. They release it to you. And they make you get pay the for the, how you're going to pay for that bus is the money, the two hundred thousand dollars they gave you. So now let's say that you now you've been in the studio, and there goes sixty thousand dollars for your album, your CD, which is norm. Sixty grand is norm for a really good CD nowadays. Okay, um, and then they charge you seventy five hundred dollars a month for the bus, plus on top, boom, around ten grand a month for the bus. Now start adding this up. Okay, then they tell you that they're going to do some promotions like this stuff right here. Bull crap. You know what? If they tell you they're going to put you in People magazine, you better tell you better wake up. If they tell you they're going to put you in Country Weekly magazine, if they tell you they're going to put you on the road with big stars and all this crap, you know what I have to say to that? You show me the proof, buddy. Show me the money first. Show me the money first. And $200,000, I could blow that in one day. One day. So tell me how in the world you're supposed to make a, a music career of $200,000 last you for five years when I can blow it in one day. When you can blow it in one day. Just go buy a bus. Go buy a car. Oh, the Mercedes. You know, the nice cars that they always... Well, it used to be Mercedes. Now it's a truck. Why is it a truck? Because they get the trucks for free from Ford, from GMC, from Chevrolet and all that crap. Because when you go on the road, they stick this big logo on the back of your bus that says Ford, GMC, or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And you drive around the country and you promote the living shit out of the company that gave you the truck. Now, here's the catcher. Here's the fun part about that one, too. Well, they give them a truck. The record label a truck the, tr the record label gives it to the artist and says there's your truck there's your nice new truck and um uh, look at how how good you're doing and how proud you are of your new family and your new home that we let you borrow from us basically oh oh no 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 really they don't borrow it you don't borrow it okay really what happens is is they go and here's your house and then they charge you for the freaking house to live. Nobody lives in a house for free. Come on. Record label's not into giving you money for nothing. So they give you this house and they tell you it's $2,000 a month for you to live there. And it includes your utilities, includes this and includes this and includes this. And, includes this. and really, guess what? They get the house for $1,000 a month and the other shit's donated to them. And they are fucking you over. I've seen this a hundred times over and over and over again. Okay, now let's move on to the promotion and the publicity. All right, now you got a car, a truck that they're giving to you and, and you're driving around, but you don't know that they're actually getting paid 10 grand a month for you to drive around in your bus with their name on it. The record label gets paid $10,000 a month to put the name of, the, of your sponsor on the back of the bus. Do you see that money? Have you ever seen that money? Or do you even know to ask? Well, wait a minute. Well, that's a cool logo. So they gave me a truck and you think you're good to go. Bullshit. You were screwed. You were lied to. You were conned. You were worked. You are out there as a slave making money for that record label, paying the money back that they gave you to the record label, and distrib distributing all of that wealth around Music Row. Where do you come in at? What do you get? Here, I'll give you a second. Think of that. Oh, you got a nice little song. And, um, wow, that's me. And I'm going to play Nashville. Oh, my gosh. What the hell's so great about playing Nashville? Let me tell you what's so great about playing Nashville. Honest with you guys. You guys out there that brag about playing in Nashville? Oh, you got to be kidding me. You're actually going to brag and promote the fact that you play for free? That you get a couple of hundred bucks? Maybe $400 at the most to play in some place? At the most? Don't, you, don't, don't people know that in Nashville you don't get paid? You play for tits. You walk around and you beg with a can. <laughs> Which I would never fucking do. I walked out of the awards one night in Nashville. I had just received Song of the Year, Male Vocalist of the Year, and Most Promising Album of the Year for the Independent Music Awards for all over the world. 
all of the bands in the whole wide independent country music bands in the world that that went into this thing competed in this thing i got the number one award so after that i walked out in the street i was uh um you know hitting the hitting the clubs with everybody else watching all the bars and the honk uh, the bands and the honky tonks the ones that are waiting for somebody to walk in and discover them which it's never gonna freaking happen it doesn't happen anymore not like that and some guy walks into me and goes you're mark connors huh and there was a guy with me, and he kind of like stepped in front of me. He's like, um, you know, he could, yeah, can he ask kind of, kind of, kind of funny. He had this look on his face, this kind of like bowed up, kind of um, aggressive look when he asked me that. And so uh, Julian was with me. He was appointed to be with me that that evening. A big, big, giant black walking refrigerator guy that was just freaking badass. So anyway, so this guy asked me. Uh, or, you know, he says to me, you know, you didn't pay your dues. I saw you up there on the screen. You were getting your awards because they got this big screen on, on on the strip where you were watching the awards and stuff. And they watched me. He watched me get my award. And then I came out there and he says to me, you never paid your dues. You don't deserve that. And I thought, holy cow. Why would this guy say this? He doesn't know me. He doesn't know um, that I have been... A musician all of my life he doesn't know how many clubs i played what does he think just because he didn't see me on broadway in the honky tonks that i didn't pay my dues well i kind of kind of you know I, I tried really hard to they, they hate people from california out there man they, they just do i don't blame them the whole country hates people from california i really don't blame them because you know what's out here is just a bunch of snobby assholes but anyway, um, the real people are out there, and I know that. Country people, you are where it's at. I know that. So anyway, I felt really bad, and, and I thought, what can I do to humble myself and to, to show this man that um, I understood where he was coming from to a degree? What can I do that would just really make him realize that I would pay my dues? So you know what I did? was I asked him for his guitar. He was a, He was a street player. And he had his, his guitar case open, you know, and had a few bucks in it and stuff like that. And um, so I asked him uh, if I could play his guitar. And uh, at first he was a little bit kind of hesitant, you know, but there were some other people around there that recognized me and what have you. And they were saying, yeah, let him play a song, let him play a song, you know, because it's cool. I sat there and I played on the street corner, just like him. And I made, I think, probably about maybe 15 bucks or something like that. Played about three songs and uh, for him. And, you know, people came up and bought my CDs and stuff like that um, that I had with me on promotion. And we gave him the money and all that. And he did some little, he did little, some, some little piece on YouTube um, about me and about that situation I saw a couple of years later. But anyway, what I'm trying to tell you guys is, is that no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, no matter how much money you spend, and no matter where you move to, no matter where you live, no matter how many songs you record, no matter how talented you are, no matter how many songs you write, no matter how many people say they love you, no matter how many prayers you pray, no matter how many begs you beg, nothing's going to happen unless the music industry wants it to happen to you. I'm not kidding you. I'm not joking you. Yep, this is my show. I smoke. Sometimes I'll even friggin' curse if I want to. This stuff really ticks me off. You know why? Because we're all falling for it. Now, is it Nashville's fault? Is it the music executives and the record executives' fault in Nashville, Los Angeles, New York that this is happening? No. Is it um, anybody's fault in Nashville, period? No. It has nothing to do with Nashville, believe it or not. What's going on has nothing to do with the actual music industry, believe it or not. See, and that's what the catch is. This is why people can't get a grip on this and understand what the hell is going on. Because they're actually looking in the wrong place. That I'm going to go into on the next show. So, right now, I'd like for you to do some homework. I'd like you to take advantage of, <clears throat> in between shows, to go to the whitehouse.gov, look up the Patriot Act. I'd like you to read the 4,000 whatever pages there are 
But there's something kind of funny about that. There's some stuff that went down in the White House. There's 300 pages missing from a document that was signed under President Obama's presidency. There was a declaration and a, and a, and a thing written up, a contract written up for Americans that he passed, of course, in the middle of the night while we were asleep, like he just does. Um, and uh, it changed the laws. It didn't just change the laws in America. It changed the laws all over the world. Now, if you don't believe me, check on it. Read. Investigate and read for yourself from the president's mouth himself where he says he's going to start controlling the music industry now. That's right. Then I'd like for you to look up the definition of New World Order. Don't think that it's some big military conspiracy theory crazy friggin' thing. Look up the definition of New World Order and see what it means. It's really not as bad as it sounds. But when you see the reality of it, it's way worse than it sounds. Because the new laws that are going to come out in April are going to require you to share your profits with the rest of the world. You know how people are complaining right now, why in the hell would I, uh, am I getting these tax hikes to take care of people that want to sit on their ass? And where are those taxes coming from, people? They come from your job, right? Okay, well, let's say your job's a musician. Let's say you're an actor. Let's say you're a screenplay writer. Let's say you're a director, um, a producer. It doesn't matter. If you're in show business, music industry, movie industry, the, every bit of talent in the whole wide world will be affected by these laws. You are, believe it or not, going to share your profits with people that sit on their friggin' asses and do drugs all day long and watch MTV. You don't believe me? Look it up. I don't know what to tell you, man. This is the facts. These are the truth. This is the truth. If you think that the government that is in this new world order thing, that is a new thing that's going on with the whole wide world, you think this is not just happening here in America. It's already happened everywhere around the country. Look up. Just, just go to YouTube and um, look up Greece riots. Look up Italy riots. Look up riots in America. Look up uh, G20 riots. Look up um, young teens rioting in America. Google that, excuse me, YouTube that stuff. And, and look at some of those tapes. And see that there are people in the streets violently fighting. Violently fighting right now for their rights. Um, I got news for you people. What goes around comes around. And when I say that, it isn't the terminology of that we used to think. What goes around comes around. What I mean is when it goes around the world, it's got to come around the world too. Guess what? It's going to hit America really soon. If you don't believe me, check it out. Look at, look at what's going on here. Okay? Now, if you don't think that those laws and all of the stuff that those poor people are fighting for have anything to do with music, you are dead wrong. Because the thing that, what it has to do with, is that it has to do with, quote, the money, period. Period. From everybody, from every aspect, from everything that you do, from your guitars to your drums. Dang it, if you sell a guitar, oh my gosh. <laughs> Soon, you will, if you buy a guitar from somebody privately, you'll be paying taxes for it soon. People, wake up. And see what the hell's going on out there in the world. All right. Now, this is affecting you as a musician. It is going to affect your CD sales. It is going to affect your, your shows. You're going to see, if you're working right now, you're going to see just the same thing that a lot of other people are seeing. You're going to go from 20 grand a night down to 12 grand a night, from 12 grand down to eight, then from eight to seven, then seven to four, and then from four, you can't even work anymore. I can't put my band on the road for no less than 2500 bucks a night. That's what I have to make a night just to pay my band, bus expenses, and all of the crap. The people that go along with it, okay? You know, all of it. 
And then did you know that, uh, you know, these places that you guys play, uh, uh, a lot of you guys play these bars and all that stuff, you know, well, that's not nothing. That isn't nothing, guys. Come on. Face it. It's like you're a bar band. That's all you are, a bar band, okay? Because you're playing in bars, all right? If you want to play in nightclubs, then you'll be a nightclub band. If you want to be playing in lounges, then you're a lounge band. If you're touring, then you're a touring concert band. But right now, guys, most of you guys are playing bars. And ask yourself, how much are you being paid? Then ask yourselves, are you taking out the taxes for that and turning it over to Uncle Sam? Then ask yourselves, did you get the social security number of every band player and make them pay their part? Or is it just you? The band leader. The one that gets off the bus and looks like T.C. Ridge and me. <laughs> you can just tell the band leaders when they got off the bus. They're the ones that have the look on their face of, oh, fuck. Um, they're the ones that are usually bossing people around. They're the ones that you got the worried look on their face. They're the ones that are always trying to be polite and, and happy to everybody else. And at the same time, man, they are shitting bricks because they need to hold this thing together. It's hard as hell. It's emotionally frustrating to know that you're working against an entity that does not want you to win. And you got to tell your band members that. that. We don't have any shows anymore. Because now they're making the, the, the venue pay them more. See, for years and years and years, the venues got away with all kinds of crap. The bands got away with all kinds of crap. Do you know how many millions and millions and millions of dollars has been made by musicians in this country performing, getting paid, and not filing taxes on it? Now, do you really honestly think that the government's going to go around the world and discipline everybody else but us? I'm not going to be that stupid. I know damn well what the hell's going on. I know why CD sales have stopped. I know why the touring has come down to like a friggin' grinding halt. I know why the venues cannot pay anymore, pay me anymore what they used to pay. I can I, I can speak for myself. I know um, that my musicians still need to be paid the same amount or even more, but the venues aren't paying that much anymore because now they got to pay the government part of the, of what's going on they write off your fee so your your uh, job guys so when they pay you your four hundred dollars if you don't go and file at the end of the year your four hundred dollars which you're gonna end up with you know what maybe six grand at the end of the year that you made if you're working your ass off golly man if you don't do that stuff guess what's gonna happen to you you're gonna go to jail that's tax evasion are you listening to me guys so every band member Every, I'm sorry, not every band member, every band leader. Did you go in and book your band under um, uh, Route 66 and the Hot Trots? Okay, well, who they make the check out to? Whoever they made the check out to, that's the one that they wrote off the taxes for. That's the one that they reported. They reported your social security, your number name, your name, your information went into the computer that is now being taxed. So let's say that you've done, you've been playing for 15, 20 years on the bars and you were making, you know, three, four hundred bucks a night, blah, blah, blah. That's the whole band. And by the time the whole band gets done, you got enough for, for enough to get there, to get back, have a beer and have some dinner, buy a pack of cigarettes. And wow, whoopity do, you played for friggin' free all damn night long Ooh, what a great thing to do and you know how many bands you know how many thousands and thousands of bands will do that right now that's another reason why you and i aren't working because bands will go play for friggin free they'll, they'll the, the, the venues will hire karaoke machines and have their patrons sing for them right there they're not going to pay us anymore we're done they can't afford us anymore america is going down the tubes you know that, don't you? And if you don't, well, then you're asleep. If you're a musician, you need to pay attention. If you're a musician, you need to learn what's going on or get another career because very, very soon, guys, listen to me, very soon, you're going to need another job. Actually, you probably needed a, a, another job since you started anyway, but you're not going to be able to play anymore unless you want to play for free. And guess what? That, right there, is the real, true, full-out intention, is to make you play for free. Because musicians, like anybody else, will work for their money, they'll work hard for their money, then they'll spend it on food and living and all that stuff. But if the wages go down, 
It's like, you know, you'll fight. You'll fight two thing and claw to play in that club just for 20 bucks. Look, right now you're... You, you, are you out Saturday night? Come on, guys. Are you in your band right now, playing right now? What'd you do? You met guys all together. Did you guys make 400 bucks tonight? 500 bucks tonight? Huh. Some of you, 200? A lot of you, nothing. You just played so that you can just play, so you can get out there because you think that people are going to love you and buy your CD and na 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 huh. People, musicians, I'm really sorry. Things have changed. I haven't been on tour all year. Not at all. CD sales are down. Everything was great. I was sitting on top of the world. Everything was rocking and rolling, man. All of a sudden, just like, boom! I'm not shitting you. Boom! Swam! Things changed. They're on their way up the ladder. Now, guys that are below me, as far as you know, my in career-wise and and how what you've done in your life and all that fun stuff, um, you know. And I don't, when I say below me, I don't mean below me is in, in that way. What I mean is, is if you haven't accomplished as many things as I have, well, guess what? I haven't accomplished as many things as the next guy either. And that guy, the guy after that. And each one of us all have a phase of how we learn um, within our life and, and, ha and what things that you get involved in and in a pay rate also. So you don't know what other guys are making and nobody's walking around telling you that they're not working. Nobody's going to go up to you and tell you that they're not selling CDs. No, not me. I could care less, though, right now. I real, you know, I know. I know what's going on. I know that it is a losing battle for me to care about that right this moment. Now, there's other things that are more important, and that is keeping what I have. No longer concerned about how I'm going to make more or how I'm going to bring in more right now. It's just trying to keep what I have. And again, if you notice, that's exactly where they want us. That's where this organization that is now taking control of every damn organization, every company, every licensed business person in the world will be affected by these, these rules, these new laws. So I just wanted to share with that with you tonight. Um, you guys got to know, I try really hard to uh, make sure that um, I come up with the right information for you guys. I've spent three years investigating this and checking this out, guys. If you want some more information, do some research yourself on the internet. I'm going to fill you in on some more stuff coming up here on my show probably next week all right so right now i want to thank you guys very much for joining me this is mark connors on backstage pass and it is again saturday january the 12th 2013 three months away from shit hitting the fan in the music industry watch the show guys i'll do my best to inform you on what i know get out there and find out as much information as you can yourself this is Mark Connors, and thank you for joining us on Backstage Pass.